Hmm. Junk mail, junk mail, junk. Ugh, so much junk mail. What is this? Hi, Jordan, reaching out on behalf of Pioneer Electronics. Would you be interested in testing our latest model of our network entertainment experience in dash unit? CarPlay, Android Auto. Would you be interested in receiving a Pioneer unit and conducting a review for your YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. I drive a 2007 Toyota Highlander. It came with this stereo. Nothing really wrong with it, just no features. And a tape deck. I upgraded it to this JVC head unit a couple of years ago. It's got a 3.5mm input, it's got Bluetooth, but other than that, not a huge amount of features. Just kind of dated. Let's see if we can take care of that. We have arrived. So I sat in their waiting room for a couple of hours, got some work done, took a look around at some of their offerings, and to make a long story short, here we are. This is the Pioneer AVIC 8200 NEX. This is actually the top of the line for the devices they offer for this year, and it has a buttload of options built into it. If I tap the AV button down here, you can just see all of the things that it can do. It has built-in Pandora, Bluetooth audio, HDMI. There's an HDMI hookup on the back of it, so you'd have to wire it in. Multiple USBs, Sirius XM if you have the built-in tuner. This one does not. SD card slot, 3.5 millimeter, AV, there's RCA jacks on the back. Rear if you have a rear setup, which this one does not car sources, car features, cameras, just loads and loads and loads of options. And what's more, if you hit this little button down here in the bottom right hand corner, that's the eject button and you can tilt this. It's sort of a transformer. So if I hit this and just tap it a few times, you can see it's changing the angle of the screen. Makes it a little easier to see, but if you want to take advantage of any sort of discs, you hit that eject button and then down here in the lower left corner, there is a disc button and then the entire thing transforms, which is amazing. You'll probably see right in here some of the options that it supports. DVD video, DivX, HDMI, Bluetooth, mix tracks, HD radio, Sirius XM ready if you have a Sirius XM tuner on it, and then there's even a microphone jack right here, but again, you're gonna have to have this actually opened to put anything in there. But up here at the top is your CD slash DVD drive, SD card slot in case you wanna use an SD card. And when you're all said and done, you just tap that button again and it will close. I'll go ahead and admit it, I have not actually tested this with a DVD, but the main draw of this device for me is not the fact that it has a built-in DVD player or even that it has an SD card slot. I did test the SD card slot briefly and it would not play any of the videos that I tried, but it's probably just a specific media type. So the thing that drew me to this though is that this this has built-in Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You've got a couple of USB plugs you can use, one specifically designated for CarPlay, one specifically designated for Android Auto. And if I go ahead and just plug this lightning cable that was included into my little iPhone here, you can see there it pops up and says CarPlay, and then on the actual unit you see the CarPlay interface. This is my first experience with it, so it's going to be a relatively limited one. I've used this for a bunch of things at this point. You can make phone calls using it. You can listen to music. I don't have any music on here. You can use Apple Maps if you really want to punish yourself. Have it read your messages to you. Do audiobooks and podcasts. And then there's the now playing option. And if you swipe over to the next screen, you get Pandora and Spotify. I have been using this for Pandora and Spotify a lot because my iPhone is where I have my T-Mobile SIM and T-Mobile offers unlimited Pandora and Spotify. So if I go into Pandora, I've got all these that I can pick from, all these different stations that I listen to, specifically a lot of kid and family friendly stuff. But additionally, you can also use Siri. So if while we're sitting here, I say, hey Siri, it does this. And I can say, navigate to the grocery store. And what you might have missed there is it did pull up and give me options about all the grocery stores in the area. I could call them, I could go to them, navigation and whatnot. So Apple CarPlay works great on here. If you don't want to just say, hey Siri, you can actually hold the button here as well. There's a little home button here in the corner. You can just hold it for a few seconds and then it brings that up. So CarPlay, I'm definitely a big fan of. On the other side of the spectrum, you've got Android Auto. So if I go ahead and plug this into my Galaxy S7, eventually it popped up and said Android Auto. And then here on the device itself, it says drive safely. Gave me information there about being safe and how you have to you have to actually be in park, sometimes even with the parking brake enabled for it to work, for it to turn on. But you can see here a little bit of information. I don't want to go too much into my notifications there. You can hit navigation to see your map and then sort of search to wherever you want it to be. You can do routes to that location. It's going to take me a day if I want to drive to Beverly Hills but you can sort of use maps in here and it's Google Maps, so it does work appropriately. It does work really well. Of course, you got your phone interface, so you can call people on your contacts list. You've also got the button up here you can interact with and use OK Google and Google Now. Over here, you've got the music button. By default, it goes to Google Play Music in my case. If I tap on it again, though, I get the option of Spotify. For some reason, it does not seem to work with Pandora. I don't know a whole lot about Android Auto either, so there may be newer, more updated versions of this, but so far, it does appear to get the job done. It does play back my music straight from the device. And then here at the end, 
Return to Pioneer. The center button, of course, takes you back to your Google Now display where you can get into all your notifications and everything, see your LTE and battery status, and then tap on this and say, is it going to rain tomorrow? No, rain is not expected tomorrow. The forecast is 94 degrees and partly cloudy. Now back in the main sort of UI itself, there are also a load of options in here. I mean, of course, as I was mentioning, you've got all the audio sources available. You can get HD audio from local radio stations and whatnot. You can use your disc if you want to play from that. You have built-in navigation, so if I tap on that, it shows me the map. And there is your map, finally. It, it took a little while to load for some reason. But, you know, you can sort of, just like with Google Maps, you can zoom in on whatever you want. I've just picked a random place here. You can set that as your destination. You can view it in 3D. All sorts of options in here. And what I really like about this Maps interface, one, of course, it's not using your phone. And two, the really cool feature, in my opinion, it seems to know the speed limits wherever you are. So if you're going above the speed limit, it will actually pop up and tell you the speed limit here is 35. The speed limit is 55. And it'll blink red to let you know that you're speeding. Very, very handy. You've also got this cogwheel up here with a bunch of options built in. This is actually one of the downsides to this, in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and show you. Here in the dimmer settings, if I go ahead and hit dimmer settings, right now it's set to manual, so it just stays bright all the time. But if I set it to auto, right now it's okay, everything looks fine. But about half the time, if, if the little light sensor that's built into it isn't perfect, it'll go extremely, extremely dim, and you won't be able to see it. So I've been having some issues with that. So for the most part, I've just kept it in manual all the time. It keeps it really bright. You also have a bunch of different options in here in terms of being able to change the background, the themes, the illumination settings, the clock, the splash screens and everything. You can change your graphical equalizers and all sorts of audio settings. If you have a subwoofer in your car, you can of course control that in here. You've got your DVD and DivX set up. So if you wanted to show subtitles and DivX and whatnot, you can do that. And then Bluetooth settings, if you need to pair something manually. So in the Bluetooth connections area, that it does show devices. But to try to keep sort of a long story short, even though I'm sure this is gonna be very long, this thing comes with a massive amount of built-in options. Basically all of the features that I can see myself needing for a very long time. Very nice size display, actual transformer display just in case you like that, Android Auto, CarPlay, built-in GPS, Maps, Bluetooth. This thing is the top of the heap as far as I'm concerned. Now at the same time, this is going to set you back quite a bit. The retail price on it's about $1,200 plus the installation cost if you don't install it yourself. I found on Amazon it's available for about $900 so that's a little bit more reasonable and for that price you are getting a lot. I mean the cheapest head units that I've seen that have Android Auto and CarPlay in them are still in the six to $800 range so 900 for this thing, which is the top of the line at the moment, as far as I'm aware, absolutely a steal if you're looking for something that will do everything you need it to do in the car. And I think that's where I'm going to wrap things up for today. I'm absolutely in love with this thing, although you will want to make sure you have a microfiber cleaning cloth with you just so you can wipe it down every now and again. It does show fingerprints and smudges. Other than that, it has been an absolute dream. So thanks so much to Pioneer for making this happen. Thanks to you guys for watching. Links to where you can find this can be found down in the description. Leave a thumbs up down below if you like this video, subscribe to receive more, and I will see you again next time.